So what is our first point? Make lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Holly and this is my husband Darren and this and is my son, son Oak <laughs> um, and we are on our way down to southern Utah. So we thought it would be fun to start a series about what makes our relationship work and how we've been able to navigate our two different backgrounds when it comes to finances. So my family is very, um, what would you say? I would say your family's frugal and my family is a little bit more spendy. It, like we went out to eat more often and different things like that. And his family. My family, we have a big family. And so we didn't typically go out to eat. If we did, it was only ever to fast food. We didn't really go out to movies or anything like that. Most stuff was just at home. Yeah. So. When we came together and got married, I don't think I really realized how different we were. It definitely was a challenge when we first got married in just combining, you know, our thoughts and ideas about money and finances. And I realized then, like, oh, now I understand why people get divorced over finances, why it's one of the number one reasons that people are having issues in their marriages. And I think it took us, like, I don't know, a couple of years before we really got it under control and felt like we were communicating well. Felt like we came to common ground. Yeah, and common ground, where we both were able to like meet more in the middle. So we thought it would be fun to have a little discussion about how we came to common ground and how we were able to really communicate well and get our finances into a place that we are both happy with. Um, one thing that I think is really important is just being open and transparent about your financial situation before and after you uh, get married. Just knowing what the situation is can be really helpful. We've heard of plenty of stories of people who had a lot of student or credit card debt who uh, didn't tell that to their spouse and then it can cause lots of problems. Um, so from the beginning, we knew, you know, that they, Luckily, we didn't have student debt. Um, well, we didn't have much student yeah, debt. Yeah, we didn't have much. Just a couple thousand dollars. And, um, you know, we, we both knew about that uh, going in when we were dating and, you know, getting engaged. And then, you know, since we've gotten married, we don't have separate bank accounts. We, um, you know, have transparency into everything that we're spending. Um, we don't have, like, separate credit card accounts or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's really important to be like so transparent where, you know, like if I were to buy something, I'm not going to hide it from you or, you know, play it off. Like we always talk about it and communicate about it. Um, and especially when you are in the very beginning stages of your marriage, being able to communicate about what you're buying and yeah, with what your budget is, is really important. So I like, I like that. And what I would say as well is that that transparency just because it is so transparent it makes it takes away stress from like I'd never even check on what Holly's spending because I know I could at any point that's where like budgeting comes in where I have you know my own budget every month that we, we both do and I have a budget for the kids as well about how much I want to like be able to spend that month and sometimes I'm under or whatever and sometimes I am over but I really try to like keep within that budget so that I don't feel stressed about money. I don't feel, you know, like, oh no, am I spending too much? Like in order to meet our goals, it's like, this is, I can spend this and be like totally guilt free about it, which I really like. One other point that I was going to make was that, uh, I don't think I had realized like the true cost of a lot of things like buying furniture or buying, you know, quality clothes or different things like that. I often, was quite just happy with thrift shopping and didn't really think much about it or buying, you know, the cheapest version of something. Uh, but one big thing that we learned is finding good value for money. Um, so a lot of times that's cheaper things when there's not a huge benefit to spending more, but just as often it's investing in, um, something that's more expensive that's going to last longer and have lots of um, extra benefit. Yeah. Like we're not opposed to buying something used 
or anything like that or like getting like a cheaper version if that's what well, if it's like short term but like long term things I think we're willing to spend a little bit more on or things that we know we're going to use like every day um or like things with the kids like we spent a little bit extra on car seats because we want them to last we want them to be comfortable for our kids we want and them to be easy to get easy them to in use. and out yeah. yeah that's what you need to talk to your spouse or significant other about is what things are important to you guys to spend more money on versus other things that you can get cheap um or thrifted coming from a frugal background what has helped me not think about it as much is some ground rules uh, with Holly that we don't buy things impulsively and that we just double check that um, that there's not going to be a deal on or that there's not like coupons available. Uh, and if we do that, then I usually feel a lot better about our purchases that we know that it wasn't just in the moment that you wanted it right then and you looked at your current financial situation that we could afford it. Um, that we really wanted it and that we weren't going to be missing out on a deal that was you know a month or two away well and i feel much more like better about the purchase as well because i was like i can come to you and be like oh yeah i bought these things and like i made sure that they were a good deal and these were like things that i'm going to use and i i really wanted and it wasn't just like a random thought and so i and i feel like i use those things more too like if it's like oh i've been really looking for a pair of jeans that are just like this and I saw that they were on sale and I grabbed them as like, that is perfect. Like, I know I'm gonna wear them and I know that they were a good price kind of thing. And I'd been searching for them for like a couple days to like a couple months. The thing I would add to that as well is that you can go too far with that list. And I think this was something we did poorly when we first were married was that I would sit and stress about getting the absolute best deal on things that we might have needed right then and you know saying oh we can wait for black friday or we can wait for like their annual sale or something and sometimes that's six months away and i think i caused holly a lot of stress with that that she would sit and research for hours something that... but i like to research in general but right. yes it did add a little bit of like extra stress well, especially the beginning i think she still yeah. researches now but back in the day she would like be like sort of like paralyzed like trying to find the absolute best deal and wasn't willing to spend something because of like guilt that you know i was going to be mad and, and I, i'm sure that came from me that i was probably too critical on be like oh like this right, could have been cheaper the middle ground. Yeah, so that we needed to be like yeah. hey you know what's like what's the yeah. easiest effort to make sure that it was a good purchase but yeah. not you know being super overbearing yeah, like I think all this like kind of boils down to finding the middle ground in everything, right? Like you can't, you know, you can't find the very best deal, but you don't want to just like go spend random money and you can't, you, you know, you don't want to eat out every day, but like it's fun to eat out every once in a while. And especially like if I don't want to cook that night, it's okay to go and get DoorDash or whatever. And if you have a plan for it and a budget for it. Yeah, exactly. So going back to short-term, long-term goals, I think it's really important to be able to talk with your spouse about those things. When we were first married, we had short-term goals like getting some furniture, um, being able to afford a fun anniversary trip. We ended up going to Thailand, which was really fun. Um, and I just think like having those short-term goals are really important. And obviously your short-term goals can be completely different from ours. But those are just some examples. And then our long-term goals were Buying a house, I think, was like number one, like long-term goal. And being able to do a pretty substantial down payment towards yeah. it, so you're not paying mortgage insurance, that type of stuff. Yeah, and I feel like so in order to achieve both the short-term and the long-term goals, I think we sacrificed on some things. Like we stayed in like cheaper apartments, or maybe we like at first we got furniture that was just on KSL, like that would last us a few months before, we, so we could save up and buy like a really nice table that we wanted. And in high school and especially in college, I listened to a lot of uh, Dave Ramsey, not to be confused with Gordon Ramsey, um, <laughs> in order to try to get a good financial foundation um, to start. And I liked a lot of things that he uh, teaches, but I don't necessarily stick to everything he does to the letter. Um, I know he advocates for like a cash, like a cash-only system. 
and I definitely used credit cards to build up credit, um, from, like all during college. Uh, but I just always made sure to um, only spend what I could automatically pay off um, in that billing cycle and have auto payments set up. And so I was never actually in credit card debt. Um, but some cool things that he teaches is to make sure to have like uh, an emergency fund and to be saving up for a house payment and to be paying off debt and that type of stuff. So um, I liked a lot of things that he teaches if you have uh, more specifically financial questions. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this little chat with us that we did. I think it's important to always communicate about finances and to be transparent, to just meet in the middle and... Make sure you know the goals. That yeah, you have. exactly. Just like making goals and then communicating those goals with each other and working together to meet them. Because I think when you're working together, like that's another like really awesome thing about marriage. If you guys liked this and there's something specific you would like us to talk about in the future let us know we're kind of thinking of doing uh, just communicating in general we want to talk about religion and how that plays a role in our marriage um, parenting and parenting styles yeah how we blend our parenting styles together uh, so if there's anything else that you can think of we would love to hear your thoughts and we really appreciate you guys watching this we hope that you all have a great day bye